Ugh. Ugh. Where am I? Sir, you're awake? You've been in a coma since 2019. It's been four years. Four... four years. So it's... 2023? Wait, 2019? So has Overwatch 2 come out yet? Yes, in, indeed it has. Sick! It's a big story campaign, right? It's going to... Great! Damn, I, I can't wait to get home, like... I need to get discharged immediately, like... I want to try the skill trees! I bet D.Va's got some great abilities, I really want to check out D.Va's skill trees. Uh, yeah, they, um, they canned those. They canned the skill trees. What?! No way, right?! That was gonna be so cool! Well, you, okay, well, tell me the rest of the game's, like, amazing, right? Like, it must have won Game of the Year again, it was, like, so sick on paper. No, people hate it, in spite of Counter-Strike literally doing the exact same thing and being universally acclaimed. Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, is there any good news? Um, well, the shock lost a grand finals to the fuel. We're the best team in the world! Whoa! Yeah, baby! We're the best! Let's go! We're so good! Yeah! Where did he get all of that stuff from? Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Overwatch This Week, your one-stop shop for all the Overwatch news of the week. So, what's been going on in the community this week? Well, to start, the developers held a live stream for the community to update us on the goings-on at Blizzard, spending most of its time discussing Star Watch before moving on to the PvE news, which the community took about as well as a Cactus Base suppository. In spite of the roadmap revealing the PvE was not in fact cancelled, and Aaron Keller's assurances that the PvE would be, quote, leaps and bounds above anything we've ever made before, the reaction among the wider gaming community was somewhat justifiably negative. Aside from the obvious, the roadmap also revealed a new limited time event called Quest Watch, Mischief and Magic, whatever the hell that means, a new cinematic, a mini 5v5 comp season, and the return of On Fire, all scheduled for season 5. There, m there might have also been like something about the Summer Games or something, but let's be honest, no, the only reason that I'm talking about it is because of all the comments I'm gonna get telling me that, oh, you can't read the Summer Games, the Summer Games are coming back, Ooh. Season 6, however, is set to be the biggest one yet, with the PvE story missions finally being released, along with a new support hero rumoured to be from Peru, a hero mastery system, a new player progression system, firing rage updates, and a brand new competitive game mode Flashpoint set to utilise the upcoming new maps set in Gothenburg and India. The World Cup wildcard tournament also ended recently, with Denmark and Portugal both qualifying to the EMEC Group A, and Finland and Iceland qualifying to EMEC Group B. F in the chat for the Irish and the Swiss. And now it's time for the wackiest part of your week! Wins, woes, or whimsy! I can try to copy a support and... Oh. <laughs> what the <laughs> Thank you for watching Whims, Woes, or Whimsy! And now it's time for the Weekly Owl Recap. This week marked the start of the APAC Qualifier Playoffs, where Owl teams and Contenders teams met for the first time, and oh boy was it exciting, but we'll cover the APAC brackets separately today. NA Day 1 started off with the Uprising 3-0ing the Eternal after firing their head coach, who apparently took their skill with them, as they genuinely struggled to beat them. Titans then proceeded to 3-0 London, who are definitely struggling in the current meta. The Hardy Diva just ain't it, unfortunately. And finally, the Valiant got completely NA diffed by the Toronto Defiant. NA Day 2 kicked off with another Eternal 3-0 defeat, this time at the hands of the LA Gladiators. Next up was a Game of the Season contender, a potential Grand Finals preview, a top of the table clash, another 3-1. To be fair to the Shock, they were somewhat competitive versus the Outlaws. Until the Outlaws turned on their monitors. Wait, this bit this bit of the script feels really familiar. Did... Have we done this before? I feel like we've done this before. Finally, to end the day, the Boston Uprising actually surpassed the mid-allegations by defeating the Toronto Mid-Fiant. Final day of NA began with the Titans falling 3-1 to the Gladiators. The Outlaws somehow dropped a map to the Spitfire, and I think it's safe to say that no matter how dominant the Outlaws are, they're always gonna throw a map for the lulls. And of course, to end the day... Wait, what? Valiant took a map from Shock? Fair enough, I guess. 
Now onto the APAC brackets. Bracket A kicked off with Pokerface 3 0ing Dreamers and Dynasty 3 0ing Rose, with new DPS Sunjun stepping in and performing admirably. The next round saw the Charge 3 1 Pokerface, but it could have gone so much worse. Charge were 2 0 up convincingly, and after Pokerface shook them on Shambhali, they nearly took them to map 5, but a tragic C9 on Colosseo in a winning fight saw them fall at the final hurdle. Next up, Spark 3 won the dynasty, setting themselves up with an upper bracket finals encounter with their Chinese counterparts in the charge. On to bracket B. O2 Blast started off strongly with a 3-0 over Panthera, and then the first Owl team to fall to a contenders team, the Dragons, lost in a 3-2 manner to Sinprisa Gaming. And after that, another very ordinary Owl vs Contenders team with another simple 3-0 by the Infernal. I'm just kidding, it was an absolute banger. Infernal vs O2 Blast was truly a game of the season contender, with a 3-2 zinger of a game, with a map of Esperanza for the ages, and a map 5 that went to all three control points, with the Infernal actually not choking for once, setting them up for an upper bracket finals meeting with the next team that we're going to discuss. Final match of the week, ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. The Dallas Fuel have broken the meta, and this strategy is truly one of the best I have ever seen. They simply picked Moira and walked straight at the enemy team. Pure genius, a tactical masterclass from Rush. Get this man a Coach of the Year award. He has turned Press W forehead into an Overwatch League viable strategy. In spite of a minor incident in Shambhali involving some white powder and some white gloop that got unleashed everywhere. Good grief, is that really in the script? In spite of the incident, the Dallas Fuel did 3-1 Sinprisa Gaming rather calmly. Let's check in on our resident Dallas Fuel fan to see what he's been up to this week. Oh. Oh, he is cooking. I mean, fair enough, that Moira was truly inspiring. And now for a blast from the past, Tuesday News Day. For this News Day segment, there is no nudes. So please enjoy some pictures of Krabby's cats. Ah, oh, aren't they just adorable? That's all for Tuesday News Day, folks. And now it's time for Clips of the Week, where you guys send on your best clips to the A51 Clips channel, and we feature the best ones. This week, we actually have three clips, yeah, but two of them are Krabby's, and all three of them are Junker Queen clips, which kind of... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm fine with that. Anyways, we're gonna skip the honorable mentions this week. Remember, you guys can change this. All you have to do is submit some clips in our Clips channel in the A51 Discord. You control this. Be in charge of Clip of the Week that you want to see. It's democratic. We promise. In spite of all other conflicting information. Anyways, on to the top three. In number three, we have Krabby with a queen clutch that he had no right to pull off. Oh. You think? You think? Yeah, they've all won. Oh, holy. That, they just popped for huge. In number two, we have Krabby, again, with another clutch that he really had no right to pull off. Damn, you're a believer. Oh! No kill me, kill me one. Someone oh. needs to take away this man's cooking utensil. <laughs> exactly. And of course, this week's winner decided by just straight up asking them if they wanted to win or not. Congratulations, Jezai! This week's winner with an absolutely filthy rampage. And that does it for Overwatch this week. Let us know what you guys think of the PvE announcements down in the comments below. If you want to help us with that, be sure to hit the subscribe button, slap a like on the video. You can also check out our Arena 51 socials, including our Discord server down below. That was all from me, Funky, and your Reddit, a Krabby, and we're gonna see you all next week. <laughs>